credit at Hilltop Securities. Tom, it's good to have you here. Welcome. Thanks for having me back, Kelly. I appreciate it. I think you need to explain to people just how interconnected munis are between kind of state and local government funding and the banking system. I mean, this isn't just, hey, by the way, on the side, this is happening. This is actually, unfortunately, a pretty important occurrence here. Yeah, and in the conversations that I've been having with investors this week, one of the main things that I'm doing is uh, recognizing and acknowledging how stunned and really disoriented a lot of the, invest the municipal investors are who I've been talking to. I'm, I'm explaining to them that we need to be realistic, that we don't necessarily know uh, everything that's going to be playing out over the next uh, couple of weeks or a couple of months, that we don't know if what happened last week and over the weekend is going to snowball. Uh, I'm not seeing cracks in muni credit quality. Uh, but as you described, there is a really strong, inter, uh, an underappreciated interconnectedness with large, medium, and especially some of those small banks and public finance. And right now we're talking to investors about being cautious, a little defensive, uh, but we also don't want them to miss any opportunities. Yeah. Talk, talk to me about kind of 2008 or, or past um, periods of, of credit strain. What's happened with munis? So in uh, we, we saw now this is close to a worst case scenario that we saw in my mind uh, playing out through the summer into the fall and the winter of 07 going into uh, 2008. And it was oftentimes uh, in that period of time, it was there was a lot of uh, it was difficult for liquidity for issuers to get liquidity during that time mm -hmm. from an investor from an investor perspective uh, MT or municipal to treasury, treasury ratios uh, especially after Lehman Brothers they really widened out and that there was some opportunity there and that's one of the reasons why uh, we're asking investors to stay defensive for months I've been talking to investors about using this opportunity to trade out of uh, credits that are, might be a little more problematic and into uh, credits that are stronger. Now I'm doubling down on that, uh, but also asking folks to be a little more defensive to really stay in highly, you know, highly rated GOs and revenue bonds. Sure. No, and it's a great point that if you're on the sidelines, you start to see these yields spike at all. Maybe there's an opportunity depending on the, the credit quality. Let me, Tom, with the last question that I have for you, at least today, because I think that we'll be talking about this for quite some time. What is the risk here as it goes back to issuers? In other words, what starts as this kind of wacky, almost esoteric thing at Silicon Valley Bank or maybe at First Republic, as the banking system kind of gets a little bit unsteady, let's say, how does that reverberate back to the ability of a lot of, you know, governments, projects, whatever that is, to finance themselves, ironically, at a time when we're doing this massive infrastructure uh, support? Yeah, that the unsteadiness that you're describing, the way that they plays out for issuers is that, that if they don't have uh, access to the liquidity, whether it be in letters of credit or other types of liquidity uh, from banks, then it's difficult for them to uh, conduct their day-to-day -day business. Now, I'm not seeing that quite yet, but that's one of the things that I'm remembering, again, very clearly uh, that happened at the end of 07 and into, if not all of 08. Um, you know, so if things snowball from here, uh, that liquidity could, I don't want to say completely dry up, but be more difficult, especially for the smaller and medium-sized issuers to, to uh, attain. And when we see that munis are available but not accepted through the Fed's new program, is that because they can't accept them? Do you think that's what drove some banks to the discount window where munis can still be accepted? I think that one of the things, one of the so one of the things that we're not we haven't been seeing this week. Well, we've been, we've been seeing two things. The first thing is that there has been, as part of this flight to quality that we saw at the beginning of the week, we did see a lot of buyers, not necessarily banks, but uh, buyers on the institutional and the retail side. They they were even in some cases putting some cash to work in munis. Yeah. They instead of having their money in cash, were choosing to look at and and uh, municipal bonds. And I think that one of the reasons for that is just because because of the strong credit quality and, and because they were seeing that as an opportunity. I think that it, there are going to be times over the next couple of months, if not uh, next couple of weeks, where that's going to continue. All right, Tom, thanks so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thanks, Kelly. Tom Koslick with Hilltop. Coming up, another outperformer this week has actually been the cloud stocks. The cloud computing ETF, SKY, still up 5% since Monday. We'll hear from a leading voice in that space next. On the flip side, check out some of the losses in commercial real estate. These are weak to date. SL Green, Boston Properties down more than 20%. Another worry for regional banks was similarly high office exposure, by the way. The exchange is back after this. 
Muni Money is sponsored by BAM. Help build America's future with BAM insured Muni Bonds. At Build America Mutual, we protect municipal bond investments that help modernize our essential infrastructure, unleashing new opportunities and building a more vibrant tomorrow. Invest in the future of America with BAM insured bonds. There are some things.